Welcome Explorers, I'm Alistair and this is the Highland Hikers. So today I'm keeping it local given the current restrictions where we cannot travel very far at all. I have walked down to Bella Houston Park which is a fairly local park to myself and uh, as you can see in the background fairly local to a lot of other people who are making good use of the weather just now. It is absolutely Baltic this morning. Um, I am completely wrapped up in numerous layers of clothing and I am still feeling the cold a wee bit. Uh, you can probably see my breath at every single uh, moment here. Um, but it's, it's absolutely freezing. So today I have decided to come for a walk around Bell Houston Park. It's a place I know pretty well and it's a place that I find, um, I find quite interesting. There's a lot to see here in such a kind of small compact area. Um, there's a lot of kind of history about the place which we'll kind of explore as we go around. Um, I'm not going to follow a, a route as such, so you're not really going to see any kind of route maps this week. Um, we'll not have any distances ascent, anything like that. Um, what I will show is that there is a heritage, a heritage trail you can follow around the park. Um, it's a great guide online, which I'll probably pop a wee link to uh, below. And um, you can follow that about. It's very, very easy to, to navigate and the park's so small that you kind of get lost and you can make your walk, your, your walk as short or as long as you want it. So yeah, I'll put a wee map up of the Heritage Trail just now so you can see how that goes. And um, I'm just going to wander around the kind of parts that I find the most interesting in that and we'll, we'll show you what we can of that area. And um, hopefully you enjoy it as much as uh, I enjoy walking about this part too. So we shall sure see you a wee bit further up the hill. So as you follow the trail of the blocks up the hill, you're led to the, the sunken garden here. And it's uh, it's pretty interesting. You've got all these blocks just sitting in what was the foundations of Dumbreck House, which was later named uh, Bell Houston House, um, after it was kind of the lands and the area were bought over. Um, but, you know, you can see the, the nice big shape of the house where the big kind of front windows would have been kind of looking north over the city but I think when this was built um, we're talking maybe late 1700s early 1800s um, all the kind of areas around this would have just been farmland and I think it would have been a, a beautiful uh, sight to behold this sitting on top of the hill and then all, all these kind of spectacular views all around it would have been pretty special and unfortunately the house no longer exists it was uh, demolished and what we're left with is the, the foundations here so we've got all these uh, big stones here and uh, these all represent some of the kind of the developments of uh, Glasgow that led it to be the city that it became as part of the, the kind of British Empire um, whether you're a, a fan of that or not we'll not go into that but um, there's lots of wee inscriptions all around this so all these wee sections down here um, probably can't really see it in that one but some of them have kind of wee metal plinths on them which have some uh, interesting things to read on it. So again, another wee thing that you probably didn't know even existed up here and it's well worth coming up and having a wee look and a wee nosy. And in, in this weather it looks absolutely beautiful as well. so cold today. I know I mentioned it earlier but I'm really feeling it just now because I've got to keep my buff down. 
so you can see my mouth and you can actually hear me my cheeks and my chin are absolutely freezing it's, uh, it's not pleasant I think this is probably one of the few things you might not know about um, Bell Houston Park, but back in the 1930s it was home to the Empire Exhibition, which was this kind of big extravaganza where we had lots of different pavilions um, made from the countries, or sorry, made by the countries of the British Empire, and it pretty much took up the whole Bell Houston Park as we know it today. and. My favourite kind of feature um, from that was the Tate Tower. Now, the Tate Tower was this massive big uh, structure which stood pretty much on this spot here. It was about 300 metres in height and the pictures of it, it looks absolutely stunning. It was just effectively a big massive viewing platform. It served no other purpose and unfortunately it was demolished in 1939. I've read initially that it was because uh, during the war it might have been um, used as a, a kind of waypoint so they could bomb the, the Clyde a bit easier but I, I've read recently again that that's a bit of a kind of urban myth so um, it's pretty sad that that structure isn't here today I think it'd be absolutely stunning just to see what you can see from the top of this hill I mean you've already got a pretty good view from up here considering Glasgow's kind of very flat at this point um, but yeah quite sad to, to see that this isn't you know, it's, it's no longer here. I think the only surviving structure on site is the Palace of Art at the bottom of the hill. Um, it still stands and is now a, pretty much a recreation um, building. They used uh, for lots of different things, certainly. My kids have been there for dance classes in the past, but yeah, it's, uh, this is up the top of the hill. This wooden structure here itself marks the exact spot where it is, and I think the actual foundations of the tower itself are still under the top of the hill, apparently it's this mass, massive block of concrete um, sunk into the top here, but you wouldn't really know it considering all the trees and the shrubbery that's around here. Um, but certainly kind of one of my more favourite facts about the place that you might not know about. One of the kind of main features of the park is this uh, stone you can see behind me here. Um, as we talked about earlier, the Empire Exhibition was a, a massive thing that took over the whole park back in 1938. And this stone has been put here just as a kind of in memory of it. Um, although it was uh, erected at the time uh, of the event, um, I believe it was unveiled by um, King George and Queen Elizabeth in 1937, if I'm correct and it stays here to this day. Um, I think originally I thought this marked the site of the Tate Tower itself but uh, I'm happily I'm wrong about that and it's uh, back where we saw a wee bit ago. So I'm just outside uh, Charles Rennie McIntosh's house for an art lover. He originally designed this in 1901 and entered it into a competition. However, I think it was pretty much dismissed from the competition. There's kind of certain rules that it, it didn't uh, it didn't meet back then. So the house itself wasn't actually built until 1996. Construction was started in about 1989. So it was a long time after his death that this actually came to be. Um, I think growing up, I never really liked Charles Rennie Macintosh's designs. Maybe that that's controversial. Maybe maybe not. But I, I went to a wedding here uh, a few years back now, and um, I think actually going inside and spend some time in there. I think maybe turned me a wee bit. I think this is uh, it's, it's pretty spectacular. It's uh, absolutely beautiful inside, and um, 
I would encourage anybody once uh, you get the chance to go and have a wee look and, and see what it's like. It's, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, the park's pretty busy today um, with the snow, a lot of people out sledging, uh, a lot of people out walking. Um, but so we're going to keep going, see what else we can find, and we'll see you shortly. So the wall you can see behind me here was built for the visit of Pope John Paul II back in 1982 and this basically formed the back of the dais so any kind of photos you see of it where he kind of stood to kind of address everybody and um, this was at the back of that bit and it's been maintained kind of ever since. I have no idea why in particular it's been maintained but it's still there it offers a nice weekend. of we kind of flat point where you can go and sit in the summer and enjoy the, the sun as this bit's kind of south facing so it gets the majority of the sun so strangely enough it's still freezing but there's a bit of moisture in there and it feels like rain I'm surprised it's raining and it's not snowing but we'll see how it goes I'm not got uh, much to show you left So, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I appreciate it's not our usual mountain hike or a kind of long distance walk, but it's something a wee bit different and I've got to make the most of what I can do in these times just now. So, if it's something that you've seen today that you didn't know about, why don't you come down, have a wee look? There's certainly a few hidden treasures at the top of that hill in Bellhouston Park, which I think are always worth a wee look. If you've enjoyed the video, give us a wee thumbs up, subscribe, and tell your friends and family about us and we'll see you on the next walk.